Thanks, Sergio. Uh, Hoda, I was very interested in hearing you speak about uh, the pathway of basketball. And, and I certainly agree with, with many points that, that, uh, that Hoda made here just before I came on. I think in the United States, we have a lot of the trickle down effect uh, from NBA to college, to high school, to youth, to youth uh, players. And so what they see on TV is what they try to emulate then as a nine-year-old or a 10-year-old, or the coaches try to emulate that as well. So we are really focused, USA Basketball is really focused on how to develop young players at the youth age seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 year olds to play basketball the right way, uh, to enjoy basketball and to stay with, stay with the game. Cause we feel there's a lot of young players that are dropping out of basketball, uh, for many reasons. But the number one reason is the number one reason youth basketball players play the game is for fun. And when coaches take the fun out of playing the game of basketball, then they tend not to, uh, not to play it. So I think that's the number one, uh, the number one reason that, that kids play. And I think that's why that's where coaches should be uh, very much at that young age to, to instill the love of the game. And I'm going to, I'm going to take it a little different route than, than Hoda did. I'm going to go from a standpoint of, of uh, maybe teaching a game a little bit to uh, as a young player so that they, uh, the young players tend to uh, stay in the game. So let me see if I can get my screen here. <laughs> uh, Sergio, here's our, you know, when we, when we educate uh, youth coaches, which I think are the, really the start. In the United States, we have so many players at a young age playing the game of basketball. And we have a lot of coaches. So uh, USA Basketball is very committed to uh, player development curriculum. And we're, we are very committed into progressively developing uh, the skills and uh, our curriculum is based on on the mastery of basketball skills so uh, we don't we don't base on age or grade or gender or physical attributes but we we process the uh, skills for uh, an age group and then we progressively teach it so for example uh, too many coaches that coach our young players uh, we feel have uh, have the wrong type of development uh, curriculum. So many of them played professional. Many of them are, are dads who don't really know uh, too much about the game of basketball. Many of them are players who played college basketball, and they try and teach a young player, seven, eight, nine-year-olds, the same way that they were taught as a college player. And what happens is that just doesn't work because the players don't enjoy the game. They're asked to do skills that are are intended not intended for that age group are not intended for their for their level of of uh, physical abilities so we really firmly believe in the progressive development model now i know uh the international game uh you have what you call the uh, uh, mini basket uh, i think uh, is that right sergio where you that's correct you, yeah mini basketball yeah yeah so I, this is very similar to that but i think we have to, in the United States, we have to really emphasize that part of it. I think the international game has probably done a better job of, of developing young players at a young age through their mini basket program. So we've just started this curriculum about four or five years ago. So we're on the ground floor of trying to implement uh, the, the curriculum. So when I say when I say progressive development, it would be like, hey, we're all probably familiar with some of that, but if I, if you ask a player who's just starting the game of basketball to dribble, uh, all right, dribble between the back and behind the legs uh, around the cones, he can't do that or she can't do that. So what happens is they get frustrated and drop out of the game. So you start with dribbling the basketball with one hand and picking the ball up, uh, two dribbles and picking the ball up. And then you uh, work into the linear, linear piece of dribbling. And then you advance from that level. So uh, these are the four levels of basketball that we think are really important. The introductory level, which is the youngest level uh, that is taught. Uh, this is the seven, eight, nine-year-olds uh, uh, have the introductory level. And, and this is the number one 
thing that we think is important to keep these players in the game is that they truly develop a love for the game. If the young player truly develops a love for the game, they're going to stay in the game much, much longer and have more fun. And, and the standards that are set, such as the, the small ball and the uh, lower basket, are very important in, in keeping kids uh, playing the game because they have more success with those things. So, so we really feel that that's important as well. So then you, the foundational level uh, is a little bit, usually generally ages 12 and 13, or, or these skills that are taken to another level. Uh, introductory level is more just kind of figuring out what the game is about. Foundational level in the, in the States anyway is more about, all right, they, they figured out that they love the game and now it becomes more of, instead of just a community type of, of basketball team, it becomes more of uh, where, where can I go? How, where, where can I develop my skills uh, the best? So this is more of, more club teams are formed uh, as opposed to just the community teams. And then the advanced teams are the high school level, uh, right? Coach high school basketball, ages 14 through 16, 17. Uh, I, I coached that level for 42 years. So the advanced level then is, is, is kids that are more physically, uh, can, more, can better physically do skills. You advance the skills in a way that challenges them and also uh, develops more overall skill development. And the last one is performance skills, which is college and our junior national team would be more in that performance level. So that's really our three, four levels of, of uh, teaching the game of basketball. And we're trying to really implement that into many of our organizations that deal with youth players. And we just feel that if, if the organizations, if the youth players, which there are about uh, 6 million youth players playing, if we can get a good, good introductory level to them, they're going to stay in the game longer and it's going to help the, uh, players down the road as they advance in the skills. These are the eight skills that we think are really important to teach. And then I'll end with this in Sergio. Uh, footwork and balance skill, uh, jump stops, pivots, uh, really important. Jay Wright from Villova, who's won our national championship several times. If you would go to his practice at the college level, he, he works extensively on footwork and balance. Uh, and so th that's really important. Uh, ball handling is a skill, shooting. Uh, screening is a very important skill. We don't recommend teaching that until about the age of 12 in the, uh, in the uh, foundational level. Uh, passing and receiving, that's obviously a skill that's overlooked, but the best teams we think we play against on the international basis are the ones that pass and receive the, the ball the best. Uh, Rebounding, uh, obviously a skill, and then whole offense and whole defense. And I'll go back to what Hoda said about three on three. Uh, we really think the best way to develop whole offense and whole defense is is playing a lot of three on three basketball. Uh, the courts opened up a lot more. Uh, we can really teach the game, and the and the players understand they can really figure out things better from a three on three standpoint cutting, uh, passing, spacing. Uh, so we really emphasize three on threes, especially at the younger level for whole offense and uh, the same with whole defense. So those are the eight skills that we emphasize teaching at not only young level, but all the way through the performance level. Uh, I would say passing is one of those where you teach the skill uh, is, is is not quite as technique based as shooting, but passing is really a skill that deals mostly with decision making. And so uh, that, that's what you have to put in your practice as well. But uh, the other thing I would add here before I quit is, is the skills, these skills are, you never graduate from a skill. In other words, you never get good enough that you never have to review the skill or go back and work on the skill. A great example is Stephen Curry, arguably the best shooter in basketball. Uh, he's not to the point where he doesn't work on shooting anymore. 
So he, he still spends time after practice making three, four, 500 shots uh, after practice before he goes home. So that's a great example of, of somebody who has a, has a high level of skill, but knowing they have it, they're not good enough that they don't have to continue to practice that. 